Hello, this is a gross pathology specimen showing the spleen and we're looking at the cut surface. When I turn the specimen around, we can see that there is no definite discrete or localized pathology. So the main uh, pathology in this specimen is the fact that the spleen is very, very large. If you look at this centimeter scale, this is about eight centimeters. And uh, if you were to superimpose this on the height of the spleen, you'll see that it is more than 20 centimeters tall. When we compare this to a normal spleen, and I'm taking the pictures uh, roughly at the same size, if you look at the if you look at the scales, you can see how markedly enlarged this is. So this is an example of congestive splenomegaly. And congestive splenomegaly is usually due to chronic venous outflow obstruction. And this could either be affecting the portal veins or the portal venous system or the systemic venous drainage. Now in the portal venous drainage, very often the causes are actually hepatic in nature. So if there's any uh, chronic condition that causes disruption of the liver architecture, for example, cirrhosis or infections like in schistosomiasis, there's pipe stem fibrosis. Uh, this can distort the hepatic vasculature, giving rise to portal hypertension. There can also be extra hepatic causes, for example, intra abdominal tumors or intraperitoneal infection that may give rise to thrombosis in the portal venous drainage system. Thrombosis in the portal venous system. In terms of uh, systemic venous drainage, uh, right heart failure or congestive heart failure, if you have a uh, failing right ventricle secondary to left heart failure, this can also give rise to splenomegaly, but usually not to the extent of uh, the very massive splenomegaly that we saw that is often associated more with a portal venous drainage that is impaired. So in summary, we are looking at a markedly enlarged spleen. So this is splenomegaly. There are no localized or discrete lesions. And this is an example of congestive splenomegaly.